<laughs> Hello, everyone. I am Ian Williams, President of the Foreign Press Association in New York. And it gives me a great deal of pleasure today, even with some of the feedback, to, 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 to welcome His Excellency, the Foreign Minister of Pakistan, Shah Mahmoud Qureshi. Yes. And uh, the Ah, okay. I didn't realize we were having a three screen situation. We're mm -hmm. very technically advanced here today. Um, so obviously this is in the middle of the General Assembly. Uh, we're very grateful to the foreign minister for the time he's taken and for his staff like Mariam Shah here who has uh, dealt with about five changes a day in the schedule during the General Assembly to make this possible. Who says the UN can't be flexible or UN missions can't be flexible? And this is a very significant time, of course, for Pakistan and the United Nations. And if I could lead in, of other people come with questions, but uh, Mr. <laughs> Your Excellency, today the I understand the Taliban have, have uh, offered or suggested that they're sending somebody to be the ambassador at the United Nations. Uh, uh, does Pakistan have a view on that? Should they have somebody at the moment? Should it be this person? Should they eventually have an ambassador of the United Nations? Uh, there are many issues involved here, and it's Pakistan's proximity to the problem. You have, <laughs> <laughs> you have more in the case than most others. Well, I think they've uh, nominated someone to represent them. Uh, but uh, my understanding is that uh, they are yet not recognized. Um, that's one issue. So if there's no recognition, how can get representation? The other issue is that person who is representing uh, Afghanistan at the UN, the question is, who is he representing? You know, the people, that uh, he was nominated by, or he was representing, have left. Uh, who does he report to? Uh, uh, and what kind of a communication you could have with the person sitting here in the UN system who's not recognized by authorities who are in charge? So it's a very complicated situation. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's. Uh, it's an evolving situation, and uh, a decision will have to be taken by the uh, the appropriate uh, committee, uh, the credentials committee, I believe, will have to take a decision at, at an appropriate time. Uh, uh, so, I understand the Secretary General is thinking that perhaps um, this could be used as leverage for the Taliban to give some of the uh, assurances that the United Nations and other bodies want from a future Taliban administration about how they administer the country. Uh, do you think that's a feasible strategy? Or isn't there enough leverage in this? See, the question is, how do you, how do you engage with them? Uh, um, uh, do you uh, engage with them by, you know, uh, uh, sort of, Pressurizing them, or, or do you engage with them, uh, recognizing that they are a reality, they're there, and uh, we have certain expectations, and they should uh, live up to those expectations. And if they do, and if they send uh, signals which are uh, positive, then uh, engage in a more constructive way. For example, uh, the uh, initial announcement by the Taliban on an interim setup uh, was viewed uh, not very really, uh, positively. Uh, people thought that it's a very, uh, very restricted uh, group. You know, it's primarily uh, representing one ethnic uh, Group over there and is not as representative as it should have been. But today I'm told that there has been an expansion and some new people have been uh, inducted. 
and amongst them uh, other important ethnic groups have been incorporated. Uh, there are a couple of things uh, uh, that uh, represent the Tajik community. I'm told there is uh, uh, an Uzbek uh, representation and I'm told that there is one uh, representation, one representative of a Hazara Shia community, if that is uh, the understanding. Then, if that is so, uh, and uh, if that is what has been reported is correct, then uh, I think that's a, that's a positive, uh, inclusive approach. Especially the Hazara. Yeah, it is, it, it, is a, it is a inclusive approach, and that uh, should be encouraged. I think any step or gesture which is in line with your expectations. If that comes about, it should be it should be welcome. Obviously, to ask for more, uh, you know, they might still be falling short of your expectations. But at least they're moving in the right direction. And if they are moving in the right direction, then uh, they should be uh, engaged constructively, positively. Mr. Minister, can you please tell us a bit of the start from the Arabic station? Um, what was the role of the Pakistan in this regard? Uh, how did you encourage Pakistan to build the Taliban itself? With the expansion, except the exclusive of other minorities or groups in Afghanistan? Uh, see, they, to begin with, uh, they understand that Afghanistan is a country which has a number of ethnic groups, right? And if they want to have a broad-based government, they, those groups have to be uh, kept in mind. Then they're also not oblivious of what the, what the chatter is. Uh, they're also, uh, we've had discussions amongst, you know, uh, you know, amongst the neighbors. There was a, a SEO uh, meeting in Shambhai. Now it's not just the West saying that, it's not the US saying that. Every uh, uh, neighbor and uh, other important uh, uh, SEO uh, meeting suggested that. So if everybody's saying that, it makes you know it makes sense, and uh, and if they are responding and they are showing sensitivity to that, that's good. And uh, if I may, to uh, do you see that there is a tricky roadmap of the near future in uh, Afghanistan? What should be the next step from the Taliban? How can Taliban be more uh, responsive to the international community? What, did, what should they do then? Well, um, the international community has um, asked for a number of things. They asked for an inclusive arrangement, an inclusive political arrangement. From, from the inductions today, it seems that they open mind to that. They have, uh, they are responsive. The international community is saying that uh, they should have no links with um, terrorist organizations. Uh, the statement that they have made uh, clearly says that they have, uh, they will not allow Afghan soil to be used against anyone, any third country. Uh, and uh, uh, they will have no links uh, with uh, you know, such organizations. If they can, if they can demonstrate that practically, uh, it will be positive. Uh, 
Respect, respect human rights. Uh, that is the third important uh, ask. My take on that was: Was there were there any women in the inclusiveness today? My information is not yet. Not yet. A lot uh, of people will be looking at that. Certainly, certainly, well, certainly. Well, see, the question is: It's a step by step approach. Uh, they can say that we responded, but you can say you haven't responded enough, and they can say. We haven't, uh, you know, we haven't uh, uh, shut our minds to that. And who knows? Uh, who knows? There could be an inclusion uh, tomorrow or the day after. I don't know. I don't know. I don't speak for them. <laughs> they don't consult me. They are independent. They, they, they take their own decisions. But uh, women are an important uh, section of society. And uh, they have, they can, and they will contribute. And uh, to have them on board will be used. Azim, you? Uh, Mr. Minister, is America and US on the same page? Is Pakistan and US on the same page as far as the withdrawal and the aftermath of, from Afghanistan is concerned? And secondly, today, President Biden has talked about four countries' access partnership India, America, and then Japan. They are part of that. Do you feel as Pakistan, do you feel any kind of threat because India is eternally hostile to Pakistan? Well, uh, on the withdrawal, uh, that was, uh, I think it should not shock anyone because there was come uh, to begin with. Uh, they could not have stayed there forever. As the president said, there was a purpose. That purpose was met, and there is no point in continuing to stay there any longer. The, the mission, according to him, was accomplished. Uh, then the previous administration had, uh, through their uh, talks with the Taliban, announced the date. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, they said they will withdraw by the 31st of May, right? So it isn't that, you know, uh, suddenly a decision of withdrawal has been taken. When this administration came in, they undertook a review. They did immediately agree with what the previous administration had promised. They undertook a review and uh, follow through that. Ask for more time, but uh, did what the uh, previous administration had committed to. So it seems that there was uh, a bipartisan consensus on, uh, or, or, or agreement or, or towards the withdrawal. On, on the question of, uh, uh, a meeting of the court, that's a decision. Uh, every country has uh, a right to have uh, uh, partnerships. We have uh, our concerns vis-a-vis -vis India, and those concerns are genuine. They're genuine uh, because uh, India has been destabilizing Pakistan. Uh, um, they have uh, been uh, instigating insurgency. Uh, they have been using uh, Afghan soil against us. We have uh, evidence of that. That evidence was shared with the international community, uh, with the P5 members and other key countries. Uh, we have concerns uh, with that. Uh, they are um, violating human rights uh, in, in a big way in uh, uh, Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir. There's hardly any talk about that. 
We mentioned that, mm. but it goes unnoticed. And there is talk about it. And now people have started expressing that. The application of human rights is important, but why should it be selective? Why should it be selective? I mean, if human, right, uh, if, if human rights are important for Afghanistan, those very universal rights are important for you know, other parts, uh, you know, Kashmir and other parts as well. So you can't have selective implementation of human rights. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, we, have, we have a concern with India, is it we India? Uh, we tried to engage with them uh, when we came into office uh, because our focus was, is on um, uh, economic uh, security of the country, um, focusing on um, human development. Uh, institutional reforms. Uh, we have a reform agenda. Uh, and for that, uh, we require peace, uh, peace on, on the Western Front and uh, on, on our Eastern side. But unfortunately, uh, the government uh, in Delhi uh, went the other way. Uh, they did not respond to the positive gestures we made, and they took steps which were illegal, violative of Security Council resolutions, and unilateral. They vitiated the client. So despite our willingness to be positive, uh, they have been uh, aggressive. Yes? Uh, to identify yourself, uh, okay. take uh, a mask you. so we can uh, hear. My name is Lanka White from the Mainichi newspaper. Uh, you just spoke about the conditions the international community has. I was wondering, does Pakistan have the same condition to recognize Taliban as the rest of the international community? And are you having any bilateral meetings here, for example, with China or others to discuss Afghanistan? Thank you. Well, uh, we, we, uh, I've just had a meeting uh, with my Chinese counterparts in Chicago. Uh, he's not here. Uh, he can do it. So, who do I meet? He's not here. Uh, but uh, we have, and uh, we will, simply for the reason that uh, they share a border uh, with Afghanistan. The uh, they are interested in a, in a peaceful civil Afghanistan. And uh, uh, we can start. And, uh, you know, we have common concerns and they can be, uh, you know, uh, a useful uh, uh, partner for Afghanistan's development. Afghanistan uh, would need, require reconstruction, investment uh, in, in the days ahead, and uh, they can be useful in, 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 in that respect. And the conditions. Sorry? Do you have the same conditions as the International Party for Recognition of Taliban? Well, we, we are saying that uh, Taliban should... Uh, uh, Taliban would require... Uh, if, they, if they want recognition, then they will have to be uh, responsive to what they are trying to If they need financial assistance, then they cannot overlook what the world is saying. Uh, uh, and if they are responsive, uh, then the environment for them uh, will improve. Uh, certainly, they will gain nothing by uh, taking steps that will isolate them. Uh, it's neither in their interest to remain isolated, nor, in my view, it will be the in the interest of the international community to, to uh, uh, isolate them. Uh, you know, they will gain nothing from this engagement. I don't want you to violate any secrecy, but it was plain that there was a lot of uh, collaboration between the departing United States and the incoming Taliban. It's, it's inconceivable that an evacuation on that scale could have gone with so little incident without some considerable degree of uh, 
collaboration and handshaking behind the scenes. Uh, do you have any sources or comments on that? Oh, I can't. I can't. I just want you to break confidentiality. It's okay. But no, no. First of all, I have no such information mm -hmm. to begin with. Uh, but I do know that they were communicating uh, what was ambassadors and Bechalins are doing. You know, he was communicating. They were in negotiations. They were sitting in Doha. They were talking to each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the uh, outcomes of that uh, process of negotiation was that there was an understanding that uh, the Taliban would not be attacking uh, US or NATO soldiers. Right? And uh, even when they were there, they more or less, I'm told, respected that, uh, that understanding. Which implies that you have a lot of discipline. So, uh, I mean, you mean? No, it, it implies that the <laughs> Taliban have a disciplined force. It's not, it's not like the sort of rebels amongst them was like, like to provoke an incident. There are two views. There are two views. There are some uh, who feel that uh, they have discipline and they demonstrate that. And there, uh, there's another view that uh, it's not one monolithic group. Uh, the different factions, uh, and uh, but time will tell. Time will tell. It's too. It's too early to pass judgment. Can we take a question from outside? Uh, uh, Poonam Sharma says, uh, the "Pakistani your prime minister in an interview with the BBC said the women of Afghanistan are very strong. I feel give them time and they will assert their rights. One, two, three years." And uh, she contrasts that with credible reports of the Taliban repressing human rights. Um, and remarks on the recent demonstrations, which were sort of unprecedented in a way. Uh, do they deserve the support of the international community, including Pakistan? Do you feel the Afghan women are getting such support? Well, what you can see is that, uh, at least as one has seen on television screens, uh, I haven't been to Kabul since, uh, since the takeover, uh, but what I have seen on television, I have seen shots, uh, uh, footage of um, women demonstrating in, in Kabul. Now, this was, uh, I think, in the 90s, this was unthinkable. Uh, it was unthinkable, but today it is happening. But that shows that shows uh, uh, there there is a different uh, approach. That shows that in the last twenty years, uh, uh, you know, things have changed. Uh, women are uh, more demanding, and uh, they're more assertive. Uh, and uh, they can speak for themselves, which is good. Uh, if the car, my, my rival for Dean of the UN Press Corps, <laughs> he's going to us all. Thanks, <laughs> Ian. Uh, so, uh, Ambassador Khalilzad, the US Special Representative of Afghanistan, called on you to do. After what has happened, all that has happened, what role he is left with to play? <laughs> He represents a very important country. The uh, United States has, is, and will remain important. Uh, uh, their views matter. Uh, and uh, he represents them. Uh, and it seems that uh, if they have uh, taken a decision, if they have, uh, they will decide that. But if they have, then they will need someone as an interlocutor. And Mr. Zalbekar Zad has been in touch uh, with, 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 with them. He has been communicating. He knows them by name, by face. They've dealt with each other. Uh, there's a certain level of uh, comfort they must have developed over the, over the months. Uh, so uh, he can and perhaps will. But he has done his job, so he, he, he That's your him. assessment. <laughs> in, you, in his view, uh, you know, uh, it's an ongoing job. <laughs> okay.
Okay, well, Nick Schiffer from uh, Hi, uh, Nick Schiffer from PBS News Hour. It's, it's been a while. I used to be the ABC News correspondent, it's not like so, but 10 years ago, I think now, so that's interesting. I'm good to see it. I want to go back to, to the question about the funding uh, and, and what, what the US will and won't do. Uh, and it's connected to normalization, but it really is just about money. Uh, as you know, uh, it is really a United States unilateral choice whether to open up the money uh, and send money to. Afghanistan to the Taliban, uh, all of them are in the city basically right now. Uh, there are, of course, efforts to go through the UN, to go through NGOs, but at the end of the day, that won't deliver the salaries, frankly, of government employees that the Taliban will need to pay in order to avoid uh, an imminent crisis. So, what's your uh, suggestion, advice, uh, discussions ongoing with the United States about whether the US will uh, allow the money? That it currently has frozen in New York and then also through the IMF and the World Bank to allow the flow again. Uh, and uh, you talked to Alan Bay. Do you understand what the US has made the decision? You see, the US will have to weigh the option. And the option is <clears throat> to uh, allow use of money that belongs to Afghans and is be spent on the people of Pakistan to meet their immediate humanitarian requirements, because they are asking the world uh, to make pledges, you know, to help uh, on humanitarian grounds. That's, that's, a, that's a, you know, welcome development. We took this in Geneva. There were pledges close to $1.2 billion. Excellent. But the question is, what is there? This money has been committed has yet to be delivered. But that money is available right now. And the requirement is right now. It's immediate. Uh, any delay, every day, every week, uh, is, is a cost attached. Uh, and I think uh, they should be cognizant of that. The second thing is, uh, how will an economic collapse US interests or interests of the West. What will that entail? A mass exodus. And where will those people go eventually? They will come to us, certainly. Uh, and we will have to deal with them. And we are dealing with them. You know, uh, mind you, very few will talk about that. Pakistan has been uh, hosting close to 4 million refugees without international support or assistance. Uh, if we calculate, we spend perhaps, uh, you, know, the, the, you know, close to $400 million a year, you know, uh, if you look at the total uh, cost involved, we're doing it through our resources uh, without any help. So uh, that's the decision made. How do you gain when that exodus takes place? Uh, we don't have the capacity to absorb more. Other neighbors are equally concerned. Uh, Iran has close to perhaps 3 million, right? Tajikistan has their concerns. Right? And uh, where will they go? And on humanitarian institutions, if they are taken in, where will they eventually end up? As far as you can tell, sir, the US has not made a decision yet. On? On, on we've seen money that the United States At least has I'm, I'm not aware of it. I'm, I'm not aware of it. I'm not aware of it. Even if they have, I'm not aware of it. So uh, where will they eventually end up? The best bit, in my view, is help create an environment within Afghanistan so that there is no need uh, for people to leave. Uh, one or two uh, announcements, uh, if they can be, uh, if they can um, uh, stick to them and uh, uh, meet the commitment made, were positive. 
announcing general amnesty, announcing uh, end of war, announcing that there will be no revenge, right? If an environment can be created in which people feel secure, people feel that uh, you know they, they, they can live in peace, then there will be no need for, for, uh, for exodus. You know, uh, because what do you want to do? You are trying to protect the vulnerable element. And if you can reduce their vulnerability, uh, you're helping them, you know, you're protecting them. That's the idea. So let's look for an environment uh, which uh, uh, reduces their vulnerability. We've got to, and, and, and unfreezing funds could be helpful. We have a question from outside from Farnas Fassi from the New York Times. Can you confirm that the Taliban have, uh, have nominated Sukhail Shafir as a UN ambassador? Would Pakistan support or recommend they have a UN ambassador? We may again. Uh, and given their conduct so far and concern over human rights and women's rights. Um, what is your response to many Afghans blaming Pakistan for supporting and enabling Taliban's takeover of Afghanistan, and particularly giving them military aid and specifically drones in the battle for Panjshir? It's up to you, to <laughs> <laughs> That seat hot? You... Was that uh, her question or yes. is, is this your suggestion? No, that, that's, 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 that's her question. That's her question. No, I, I'm merely the messenger. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I, think, I think if you actually believe that, I think you're, you're, you're in denial. You really are in denial. Then you have no idea, you know, this to begin with. Uh, when, when, uh, I, when I heard uh, former President Ashraf Pani uh, speak in Tashkent and uh, sort of allude that the trouble that Afghanistan was facing was on account of those 10,000 people that were sent by Pakistan into Afghanistan. And that's, uh, that's the reason for violence or increased level of violence in Afghanistan. He was in denial. And allow me to say he wasn't speaking the truth. And time has proven that. Where did the 300,000 people train go? Where were they? You know, <laughs> they were far better trained and equipped than Taliban. You know, they were far greater in numbers and in, in, in uh, you know, sophisticated weaponry they had with them. So this would be living in denial if you feel that Taliban have uh, taken over uh, Kabul because of Pakistan's help. Allow me to say, Taliban have uh, gained this ascendancy because of the failures of people who were governing Afghanistan. The, 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 the credibility that they have lost, the support they lost uh, uh, in the Afghan people, you know, the, the, the squabbling, uh, infighting, the corruption, you know, the misgovernance, that all contributed and people lost confidence in them. People want peace. Ordinary Afghan wants peace. Anyone that can give them hope and peace And if they feel Taliban can do that, you know, uh, they are giving them the benefit of doubt. Who knows? Who knows what will happen tomorrow? But the people who were ruling and governing, they were failing and they failed them. Interesting. Thank you. I'm Mr. Minister. From, yeah. from Nika. I'm sorry, from Nika. I'm sorry, I'm late. I'm, you may have said this already, but I did want to follow up. We did ask you a question yesterday about this follow up to that regarding Sohail Shaheen's um, nomination by the uh, Taliban as the 
candidate for permanent representative at the UN, which begs the question, who should be representing the Taliban rather Afghanistan at the UN? Uh, you yesterday said there's a pragmatic political reality. It's up to you to see it, but can you be a little more clearer about Pakistan? The, the, the clarity is that I don't think that decision you know, that is a decision that is taken by the committee. Uh, I'm told that there's a credentials committee and whenever they meet, they will uh, weigh the options and, and take a decision. Uh, I believe they haven't met yet. Uh, so how, how can I, how can I uh, you know, take a decision which is not mine? But how would you see, what would you, would you appreciate it if uh, the Credentials Committee takes the decision and does accept the Chinese nomination? I can't speak for the Credentials Committee. I'll have to wait for their decision. Azim, you follow them? Is it correct to say that China's United States is still adopting the policy of do more towards Pakistan? What, what, can, what can Pakistan do more? We would like to know. <laughs> when Afghanistan was attacked, we sided with the United States. When uh, they wanted to uh, 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 come into negotiations with the Taliban and Pakistan, they wanted Pakistan to facilitate uh, bring them to the negotiating table. We did that. When they wanted a uh, 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 safe passage for people to leave Afghanistan in safety, we helped. If they want Pakistan to assist in uh, humanitarian, you know, uh, sort of distribution of humanitarian aid, we are willing, we, we are offering to help, you know. And you know, Pakistan can be that hub for you know distribution of uh, assistance. When they wanted uh, their offices, you know, the UN offices and some other offices relocated to Islamabad, we said we are open to that. Tell us what can we do more that we have not done. Unfortunately, we have not been recognized for having done what we have done. Fingers have been pointed at Pakistan. You know, uh, we have been uh, facing this blame game for far too long. And believe you me, uh, it is not helpful. Uh, for someone who is trying to uh, 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 build a, a, a healthy bilateral relationship, it is important. Uh, United States is important for Pakistan. And Pakistan, believe you me, will remain important for the United States. How many friends do they have in that region? Just look around Afghanistan and see. And Pakistan that has been supportive, that has been uh, helpful. If you keep pushing them, Pakistan, pushing us into the corner, you know, no matter what we do, it's never enough. Then uh, a state will come when Pakistanis feel that no matter what we do, it's impossible to please them. They keep shifting the goalpost. And if that sinks in, it won't be helpful for the, for the relationship. Okay, your staff are telling me to time, but we wound up. Obviously, Pakistan is very important in this. That's why we're here asking the question. And this is not the last time you're speaking. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I'd really like to thank you on behalf of the Foreign Press Association for appearing here and for um, answering some rude questions almost. I mean, correct questions. <laughs> All the best questions in group. Any British journalist can tell you that. Um, so we're very grateful that you came and we hope to see you again soon. And we hope there's a, a successful denouement of the various relations, the ballet between China, the US, Russia, and all the others. You, you seem to have got yourself a really mixed card on the dance floor at the moment. Uh, any final comments? 
uh, I wish I could choose my part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who would it be? That is for you to guess <laughs> and say the last answer. <laughs> okay, thank, thank you. you.